Hey, what's happening, guys? I'm working on a video. I think my breadboard's goofy. This is a uh, hex inverter. And I got it set up as a relaxation oscillator, which was going to be what the video was going to be about. But look. Like if I move this in, in just the right way, It'll do what it's supposed to do and oscillate, but then it just falls back. So I, I think my breadboard's goofy. But luckily, I just picked up a new one yesterday. I got this little breadboard and jumper kit from Timo. I think it was like five bucks or something. I'll put a link down below if you need a new breadboard. And if this one turns out to be a better than the one that we're currently using because doggone it I wanted to make that video and it's just not happening okay so this has got a looks like these can be separated into two halves let me get a meter and we'll uh, have a look all right got the meter set for continuity so I'll go like this we're good here, nothing here. Good. Same with the blue, nothing here. Good. Huh. Uh oh, this one's not not getting anything at all out of this one. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so there's a split down half the breadboard, which is not a big deal. You can just put jumpers in there if you don't want it. But uh, let's turn off the power supply. Disconnect the oscilloscope and the power from the old breadboard. And we will move things over, and I, while we're doing it, I can explain the circuit to you. So, first of all, this is our hex inverter. This is a 74HC04. It has six inverting gates in it. Line that up right. Yep. Right board got a little bit of a dish, but yeah, they're all like that. All right, so it takes power on pin 14 and it needs to be grounded on pin 7 so everything else in here starting here are our pairs of inverters so there's 1A 1Y 2A 2Y 3A 3Y then up here we have, uh, let me go this way maybe, 4A, 4Y, 5A, 5Y, 6A, 6Y. So what we're going to do to put this whole thing together, first of all, we're going to need two inverters connected together. So we'll go from the output of one to the input of the next one. Come on, get in there. There we go. Oh, lost my lost my tweezers. Hang on. All right. So now we're going to create a little feedback loop in our first inverter. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect the input of one to the output of one. So one A to one Y, like so. Then the next thing we need to do is we need to complete our RC circuit. Resistor capacitor, that's our RC. So we need to go from the output, our second output, back to 
the input here of this pin like so so from 2y to 1a now since this is a CMOS device we need to uh, not float our other input so right here we have three a we'll block that just like so then we need to do the other side as well so uh, pin 13 is an input so we're going to ground pin 13 and the same with pin 11 and we also need to ground Oops, that one's not in there. Sometimes you gotta wiggle them with the new breadboard. Yeah, the last one is pin number nine. So there it is. There is our relaxation oscillator. So since we do have ground on both sides of the breadboard here, I'm just going to connect our grounds up like that. Then we need a way to get our VCC in and a way to get our ground in. And then we'll need something in the ground plane for the uh, oscilloscope probe. Oh. And we'll need our output. Our output is on 2Y, so that's pin number four. And now we should be able to hook up power supply, put some power to this. It's drawing 22 milliwatts. Hook up the oscilloscope. And hopefully we should get some oscillations. And we do. Let me zoom in here. You can see. Uh, let me shut that light off. All right. So there we have it. Our oscillator is oscillating at 308 hertz with this particular combination, which is a... Uh, 1.5k resistor and I can't remember exactly the capacitor I put in there looks like a uh, oh come on no focus focus 105 So that's a one microfarad. That's pretty big. Let's see if we can't put in something smaller. I have over here some polyfilm caps. Oh. Let's go one nanofarad. It's quite a jump from one microfarad, huh? So, again, this goes from the output back to the input, just like that. Focus, all right. And I'll turn on the power supply. Now, check this out. We went from, what, 300 hertz to almost 300K. Let's hit the auto ranger on that. And while that's going on, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about what's happening here, how it works. So the 74HCO4, it's a hex inverter, which means it contains six individual inverter gates. Each inverter takes an input signal, either a one or a zero, a high or a low, and it produces the logical opposite. 
If you give it a 1, it gives you a 0. If you give it a 0, it gives you a 1. It don't get much simpler than that. Now, what we're going to do with the resistor is we connect a feedback loop. So we have the resistor. I'm pointing at it. Well, you can't even see it. Heck, hold on. There we go. So our resistor on the first inverter and our capacitor on the second inverter gives us a feedback loop. The resistor is used for two things. It's used to limit the current flowing through the, the uh, circuit, but most importantly, it just provides a discharge path for the capacitor. The resistor along with the capacitor is what um, determines the frequency of the oscillation, and that can be uh, determined with the formula F equals 1 over 2 times R times C. That will give us our oscillation frequency, which in this case is 292k i'm inputting 3.3 volts and you see we're we're losing very little so it's, it's doing great like i said the basic operation here involves uh the capacitor charging and discharging and this leads to the continuous operation of the oscillation of the signal this is how all inverters work by basically charging and discharging a capacitor so initially the capacitor is low. It's discharged. The inverter is low. Now, as the capacitor charges through the resistor, now we have some hysteresis in here, so you're not seeing that smooth charge. Let me see it a little bit, but it's, it's kind of blocked out. As the capacitor charges through the resistor, the voltage at the inverter increases. Pin 1, down here, our input, that voltage increases as the capacitor increases. And once it reaches the threshold to pop over to a positive uh, one, it goes low. The capacitor discharges through the resistor, and that causes the voltage to drop until it reaches another threshold where the resistor pop, or the inverter pops the other direction. This thing swings, and now we're charging again. It goes on and off and on and off ad infinitum infinitum how, how you say that now if we take a look here we don't have a beautiful square wave we have a nice square wave but we don't have a beautiful square wave so we can use everything we have here and we can make it a little bit better so all that we need to do is I'm going to pull out our output line and we're going to jump the output, I'm going to, need to take out this ground here, hang on. We are going to jump the output of 2 to the input of 3. That's what that little, that little jumper wire I just put in there does. And now if we come over here and take the output and we take a look at our square wave, it is much better. It's still not perfect, but it's much better. And you see our peak to peak has somehow increased over VCC. Take a look there. There's my input. 3.296 volts. And here we have 3.4. Where is that coming from? Well, if you remember when I told you when we put this up, we've actually created a little bit of an amplifier with that feedback loop. It's not much, but it is working. So, I think that's pretty cool. And I have a dead breadboard, so... You know what? This breadboard's been with me since uh, I started this channel. <laughs> I almost hate to throw it away. A true piece of channel memorabilia. Oh, well. I'll think of something fun to do with it. Maybe I'll send it to one of you. Anybody want a slightly used breadboard? <laughs> All right, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Because it's the last one I'm doing before Christmas. If you did enjoy it, give me a thumbs up. And remember, um, I'll put a link down below to the breadboard. And jumper kit that I got off of Timu was like $5. All right, guys. That's it. I'm out.
Peace. Merry Christmas.